We are now ready for the fine grooming. The fine grooming is probably what will make or mar your life in the show ring. And the expertise with which you do the fine grooming will probably mean whether you get big awards with your dog or whether you don't. Now, I have to show you a couple of new techniques with fine grooming, and I also have to show you the feet. So we will commence with the feet. I will then show you the new techniques whilst doing the hindquarters, then use these techniques whilst doing the front and the underline. And lastly, once you've mastered these new techniques, I will do the most critical portion of your dog, which is the head. Now to these feet, which present quite a problem. There's the foot, all woolly. Now you attack the feet, firstly, from underneath. You hold the foot with your finger around the dog's nail. See his nail there? Put your finger around the nail, then you turn the foot over and that will open the pad up. See how I'm pulling that back with my finger? Now we are ready to start cleaning out from between the pads. Very important you have a pair of scissors you're comfortable with. You must never, never point the scissors into the pads this way because if you do and the dog moves, sure, you will cut the pads. Keep your scissors horizontally, flat, right across and clean out all that area between the pads themselves. See, right between the pads with the scissors horizontally across. And every last hair should be cleaned away from those pads. Now sometimes you'll find, if, especially if the dog hasn't been groomed for quite a while, horrible little nasty mats of hair in there. They must all be cleaned away as well. And in fact, the dog feels extremely comfortable with this hair cleared away here. And if it's summertime and there's lots of birds around, for you people purely with a pet, it's a good idea to always do this, perhaps once every two or three weeks, and keep the pad all nice and completely clean of hair like that. Having completed this area around here, See how nice and clean it is? You now must start on where the leg hair actually joins the toe itself, which is here. And you just go around very neatly around the toes themselves. And we shape the rest of the foot in actually from the top. But it will make it easier if you once again spread your toes with your fingers. See my finger in there? Spread the toes with your finger and just go around those hairs which are overlapping the pads. Just be a little bit careful also of this webbing. That is actually webbing in there, see? Now, when cleaning the hair, once again, keep your scissors flat across like that and never put them down this way or you'll cut the webbing. Keep them flat across. Then, with the dog standing on the table, you just comb the leg down like so and all the hair down. Once again, using the coarse end of the comb. Make sure the dog's foot is steady on the table. I have actually had my hand up here steadying the dog from there so the foot is steady on the table. Then holding your scissors vertically like so 
just go around like so. And that way, you'll never go run up the toes like the poodles are done. You'll never run too far backwards up the toe. You are, in fact, just going around the foot itself and making it round and cat-like and neat. So holding the scissors vertically, you just go downwards. Then you will see me doing in other shots when I'm doing fine grooming. It's quite a good idea to recomb. Shake the foot. So you get all those odd hairs. Put the foot steady on the table again and you just cut off any odd hairs. See how nice and cat-like that foot looks now it is completed and see how you can see the dog's actual pad here. And so I've cut away from that juncture there, actually exposing the pad. And that makes the dog look like he's standing more up on his toes. See how much further up on his toes he looks on that foot as compared with this other one on this side. And yet I can assure you this dog is standing evenly on those two feet. It's just that this one is trimmed and this one is not. I will now show you how to trim the foot in from the rear. You start the back edge of the foot from uppermost. See how nice and clean that all was from before. This area here is just trimmed along even, like so. So that when the foot is standing down that way, once again with scissors vertical. You just bring it in neatly so that it's coming into the foot. Just neatly so that when the dog's standing you've got some pad showing. And as you comb the hair down again you don't want any verandas of hair sitting out. You just want it to go neatly into the foot itself so that the dog appears as it's standing up on its front toes and hence a little bit of the back pad here is showing. Also, you want the hair neat up around this pad here. And when we come onto the leg, I'll show you how we expose that by pulling the pieces of hair out with the finger and thumb. But from the back view, there nicely is how your foot should look. Not all shaved away in this area here, like I see some people do, but just neatly down so that you are just exposing that back pad there. Last but not least, regarding the feet, we must do the nails. And although there are nail clippers available, you are far safer using an ordinary file like this one. This is just a carpenter's file. That's all it is. And I think it's called a second cut. Holding the dog, steadying the dog's nail with your index finger. This is the nail I'm just about to do. Steady it with your index finger on your other hand. You purely with firm strokes, go upwards from the bottom up, like so. The dogs don't like it a bit, but you won't draw blood in doing nails from this way. You'll keep them looking natural, and it is by far the safest way to do it. And if you always steady the nail with your index finger like so, you will never hurt the dog. If you do 20 or 30 firm strokes a week, you'll keep most dogs' nails down quite nicely. And when the nails are down far enough, with your finger 
thumbnail like so if you put it right into the crack there underneath, right underneath the nail when it feels soft you are down close enough. See that little horseshoe piece underneath there? That is where you put your nail there to see whether you're close enough. Just underneath there. And when that feels soft, that's close enough. And to finish off the nail, you just round off the burrs by going downwards that way. That completes the trimming of the feet and the nails when of course you've done the other three nails as well. I shall now start the hindquarters. See how that's grown through in the last couple of weeks and it's not all pink like it was before. You commence the hindquarters by first of all trimming the foot. I have already done the foot in exactly the same way as I did the front. The underneath and then putting the foot down and going vertically roundwards, round this way as I did before with the front. However, we do have a bonus with the back feet. There is no need to file the nails on the back feet as the dogs wear those down quite sufficiently by pushing themselves along and propelling themselves on hard ground. So, that, with that back foot done, we now commence here. With your stripping knife, now is a new technique. We hold the hair half way along its length and not right down to the skin. And that is how we blend, half way along its length but with the same jerk. And where you want to get the hair close, you hold it at the root next to the skin. Where you only want half the hair to come out, you hold the hair halfway along its length. And that is quite a new technique for you people who are stripping the dog for the first time. You see how I have stripped that little area there? and it is not pink and bald, there's still some hair remaining and that is through holding the hair halfway along its length. Then you continue down along the line or the seam that I showed you in the stripping portion of the video. Once again, holding the hair halfway along its length so you leave some hair behind. And you continue down along this seam, just holding halfway along the hair. Halfway along, so that you leave a little hair behind. Until you join up with the area that was done before. Come on. Good boy. Now as I'm approaching the area that was done before, see that? I will have to hold those few hairs a little bit closer. So, the closer you want to get the trim, the nearer you hold the hairs to the dog's actual body or skin. And here I come getting off that little curl. And so now I have adjoined the strip that was done previously. So with the comb, you comb it down, you comb it back up again, you get the little bits of hair that are untidy, and you tidy them so that the whole thing is into a curve into his thigh. And I have now taken that piece of hair off from this side and blended the thigh area right into the bald area in here. And as you can see, that's where I started. You can see that line quite distinctly. 
and that is where I've blended to. And when you comb that little bit of hair upwards, you can see it gradually gets longer and longer until you reach a maximum in the centre of the thigh over here. So we will now go round to the side of the leg and I'll show you how to blend that into the body coat. I am now going to show you the area from this little point which I've shown you so many times before to halfway along the thigh, which is there, in a triangle to the tan. So that area in a triangle here. Now how you do this is with this little knife which I call an undercoating knife. These are a very cheap little serrated edge knife. You can buy them anywhere. And with this knife holding it on an angle like so, you simply scrape down in that triangle there. And that will pull out a lot of the hair from underneath, undercoat. And this is quite represents quite an important process, in fact, because later on in my coat maintenance section, I'll be showing you how to maintain a coat regularly with this little knife. But in the meantime, it is just that outside triangle that I want you to work on and just scrape it so that we are, in fact, thinning it down a bit. Now, the way people do this triangle here varies and there are some kennels that strip it bald right back that bald all of that together with this pink bum here and this is where personal tastes come in I personally do not like it bald I personally just like it undercoated with this little knife and so I am showing you my personal style here I simply make the hair longer and longer from that area that we boarded two weeks ago to a maximum here. So, holding the hair once again, just on the ends, anything which is untidy in that triangle, I literally remove. And I rake it down first, then with my comb, I comb it upwards, I give the leg a shake so that all the odd hairs hang out or stand out and then just holding the hair on the very tips I take away any hair which I feel looks untidy and that is all I do in that triangle. Now if you think the dog's legs look too heavy when you do it like that. Strip it down further by all means. I can only give you my personal opinion. And in side view, what school of thought, as I said, is to take all of that area off. And another school of thought is to leave a great tuft of hair on there so you actually look like there's more dog behind the tail than there actually is. Well, I feel both those methods are exaggerated somewhat. And I feel that the best way to teach people is to just make sure that line is clean and from the side follows the back line of the leg itself. And you must follow that back line all the way down, which brings me to this area here next. So, these hairs, as you can see, don't follow that nice curve, that's the look you want, so obviously these hairs too have to come off. And it's important only to take a very little bit off to give you that lovely clean line down the back of the neck, down the back of the leg. So, just a few hairs only off there and be very careful to comb it, comb it backwards comb it backwards that way. See the few hairs that are interfering here? See 
those few hairs that are interfering there, they too must come off. So you bring your line right down to the hock here. Now to this hock area here. A very important area for you people who are going to show. And quite often it's most untidy, all this area. That's one length, that's another length, that's another length. You must have it neat. And all the same length. And in fact, if you have too much hair on the outside of the hock here, if you're showing your dog, your dog can then look what we call open hocked or bandy. And if you have too much hair on the inside of the hock, which is here, you can make your dog look cow hocked, which is this way. So it's most important that you keep that hock area fairly short and very, very neat. Now, note I'm using finger and thumb only. Like when I got to areas where I have to have dead accuracy, it is a good idea to use finger and thumb only. And you must trim your hock area, which is the area from that point to the ground, parallel and straight. So, looking at the dog from the side and looking at it from the back, you must have all those hairs from there to the ground in a straight line. So take it off well around the hock, fairly short around the hock, fairly neat around the hock, and level with the hair underneath it, taking special attention to the hair on either side of that little funny bone there, and then make sure your actual hock is straight, either by scissoring it off with scissors, which is the simple thing to do, or if you want to be fastidious, you can pull that out too. But I only ever use scissors in that very small area there above the foot. The remainder of the hock is straightened with your finger and thumb. So, there's his pad there. You can see his pad quite clearly, straight from there to the hock itself from all angles all the way around. And when we're doing the front legs, of course, we practice straight lines once again. There it is, quite nice and neat and straight. I'll show you that view from the side. So in summary, with the back leg, you have that area, the hock, straight and parallel all the way round. So it's straight from the hock to the ground. From this point here, you are trying to get a maximum curvature of the back leg, both from the back line here and from the front line there. That is what's called the dog's turn of stifle for you people who are going to show. So we are trimming in from here a maximum curvature in that back leg the illusion from the back end here and then again from the front end here with a straight hock which must be as short as possible and low to the ground. I will now show you how to get a good curvature look into the back leg from this tricky area here which involves the dog's tummy and a little bit of his underline as well. Before we start on this little bit here, it's necessary to check these pieces here and make sure that there isn't a step like that. See that step? And that the black goes neatly into the tan, just with some graduation. So you comb that hair up, give the leg a shake, and just the long hairs, just the long hairs. So that it all neatly goes from the shorter hair on the saddle area here to a maximum in the middle of that leg that I've shown you before from the other angles. So just the long hairs there so that the hair gets gradually longer and longer. And once again, it's a roundness and just a neatness.
and continuing that blending process just down with these bits here until you actually work onto the flank area itself. Now by the flank, I mean here, hand underneath the dog, that loose piece of skin that I can actually push up. Once you get to the edge of the flank, then you stop. Because the idea is that you extend the curvature of the leg up to here. And I'll tell you more about that in another distant shot that I will take in a minute. But this flank area here must for the moment be left long. You see that? Now, now it's a matter of doing the dog's personal parts. Note I'm using my fingers. You must clean away the first inch of the underline and he won't appreciate you getting around his old fella at all. So use your fingers. That all has to be cleaned and for you people who just have pets if you keep the area round a dog's old fella quite clean, you'll find that it doesn't hold the urine and the dog will have that much less of that doggy smell. Now, you must get all the hair off this, taking a small amount of hair at a time and pulling. You're probably all sitting at home there going, Ugh! And I've got a guy with a nine-year-old male dog that can strip his dog completely but still brings it back to me to do the old fella because he just can't bear to do it. But if you just take a very small amount of hair at a time, you pull with a jerk, either with the right the end of your knife or with your fingers, you can get it completely clean. And if you cut it, the new hairs will bristle and as they grow they'll be sharp and they'll stick into the dog it is far kinder I can assure you to pull those long hairs out and if you can get that area completely clean it is far far more hygienic for a dog that lives in the house they're practically all done just a few little hairs here all right, Royce. You wash your hands well afterwards. It's really not so bad. And the last little bit with my fingers. So there we have the tummy area on the male dog clean. And with the females, it's just as important to use your fingers so that you don't cut the nipples. And now that tummy area is clean. And from underneath, I have cleaned away, just with my fingers, that complete tummy area right down to the dog's nuts. A whole lot. All nice and clean. Dogs and bitches both. And there is the hair that I showed you before from halfway along the back leg. From the back view I showed you when we stripped out the hindquarters. So that's what your dog should look like with the tummy clean. And lastly, to complete the back leg, it's just a matter of neatening that little bit of hair right on the flank itself to follow this line through here. So it's just a matter of neatening that there to follow that line through. Because as I said before, you're looking for a maximum curvature on this back leg and that must follow through to here. And if you take that hair off in there, as you see some people do, you make the dog look very narrow in the leg. See how narrow he looks? You also make him look longer in the body. So the idea of leaving some hair on there is to make the leg look wider actually than what it is and the body itself when viewed from underneath shorter. 
That is a show, technical show point, really. So to do it badly is worse than to not do it at all. So make sure that area is neat and that this area is a maximum to give him its good turn of stifle and that the hock is vertical and straight and very, very neat. And that completes the trimming of the back leg or the hindquarters when, of course, you've done the other leg as well. We will now continue trimming in or fine grooming the underline. With the underline, the idea is that you go from the bare tummy that I showed you before to a maximum here. Now, this can be overdone and also people do it in different ways. Some people do it in a line, straight down, which is probably simpler. And some people do it more following the dog's rib cage, which means that it's up closer there and then coming down into a maximum more in that sort of effect. I personally prefer that because I think it looks more natural. The idea of the underline is to make the dog look deeper in rib. However, this steepness in rib can be overdone. The dog should be the same from the bottom of the hair of the underline to the withers here, as he is from the ground to his elbow joint, which is there. So for you people who are going to show and you don't know quite how long to leave the underline, measure the dog from the ground to the elbow, then measure it from the withers to the underline or the maximum of the underline itself. And that is the length that you should leave it to get a balance of the dog. That is, that distance there should equal that distance there. Now to trim the underline itself is really fairly simple. Some people scissor it down. You will lose colour if you scissor it. I personally prefer to do it with finger and thumb. But you need to go from one side to the other. So you first of all work on this side and then coming in from the other side, you work on this side. You comb the underline down, then you pull off any hairs which are untidy. See? Just those that are untidy. Comb it down again, pull off the hairs that are untidy making sure that you do have a graduation from the black hair here into the longer hairs of the underline itself. And you go down here to a maximum between the dog's legs. And you make sure it is neat. How many times have I said the word neat? But the whole art of fine trimming is to make the dog look like the hair is natural and in fact not trimmed at all. No lines, no steps, just neat. So just take off those hairs which interfere with the line and if you do it by finger and thumb and not by scissors you'll find you'll keep your tan and if you persevere you can get just as neat an effect. I will now show you the area under the front leg. To get the maximum portion of the underline, or where the hair is the longest, right, it is just underneath the front leg, so you lift the front leg up like so. And you trim it in there, once again, very neatly. I do find it a lot easier to trim that section of the underline with the leg being held up, like so. And I think that underline on this particular dog looks fairly good now. Maybe just tidy it up a little bit from the other side. Having completed the underline, I am now going to show you how to blend in this little section or V in the front and blend that into the front legs. But before I actually start, please note how nicely 
the throat has grown through and blended into the shoulders. That throat actually has one week's less growth on it than the shoulders do. Yet look how nice and close and clean that looks. So for you people who are going to show the dog, we are now doing this blending just a minimum of time before the show, maybe the day before. Now on to this fee. At the moment, the V in the front will look something like that. Your clean line down through your throat, and then this great step here. Now, you want your dog with this effect, so that the clean line of the throat continues right down into the leg and into the underline, which we have already trimmed. So that is the effect I am trying to get now by removing these hairs here. See that unbroken line there? Right through. Now you continue trimming that by lifting the leg up as I showed you before and just taking, see, these odd hairs out here which bring it nicely into the underline that you have done previously. And so you get the line from the underline right through to here and right up the neck all in one line from there through there and right into the underline. Now just a couple of things about the chest. Once again, individual grooming styles, I guess, come into this. That is how I personally like seeing that V in the front done. But there are some people who take that right off, right down to the leg, like so. Now, I personally feel that makes the dog look long-legged, that is unbalanced, and it also makes it look shallow-chested. Because I do think that the idea of the underline coming into the chest is to make the dog look like it's got a slightly deeper chest than what it has. So for you people who are going to show, maybe that's a point you might like to evaluate for yourself. Just one last thing about the chest before we leave it. This white on the chest bothers some people. Now this particular dog's only got a very, very few white hairs here. And in fact, white on the chest is present in some strains of Airedales. It is not a show fault, but some people consider that too much white on the hair chest is ugly. And quite frankly, if a dog has a great big patch of white right around here, it certainly does make the chest look wide, excessively wide. And if that is the case, well then there's no harm in you going over and just picking over those few white hairs, like so, just with your fingers, and therefore having a little bit less hair on the dog's chest than you normally would. But from the front angle, the main thing to be to watch for is that the whole of that line down there is neat in one straight line, blending into the underline with no unbroken lines whatsoever from throat to chest. And as I said before, with some of those white hairs removed if you wish. With the underline now complete, I am now going to commence work on the front legs. Before you start the front legs, you must comb. Once again, with the wide end of the comb, you comb first down, all the way round 360 degrees, then up, all the way round once again 360 degrees. Then a trick I've learned over the years is the leg a shake. Put it on the ground. And remember, we've already done the feet. And you can then see which hairs you have to remove. Now, it's most important the front legs are done purely with finger and thumb. You'll notice I do a lot of the underlying finger and thumb only. You get much more accuracy without using the knife and in fact just using your finger 
and thumb. That's with the same action holding the hair halfway along its length, just the untidy hairs and giving a fairly sharp pull. Now the idea of the leg, I told you already before to get this line with the underline here and the V in the front. You want an unbroken line from chin to toes. And I showed you how to do the toes so that they were nice and cat-like and upright. So you want this unbroken line through here. But the leg itself you want straight on all angles, perfectly straight. So having combed the leg as I showed you, it is now just a matter of pulling out those hairs which interfere with the straightness of the line. This section here is most important. If you remember when I told you to strip out the shoulders, I told you to stop at this junction here where the leg bends. We are now blending that from the shoulder into the leg here. And you can see when I comb that up exactly the hairs. See the hairs that interfere with that straight line. And they are the hairs that you remove. And you'll find that you'll come right into that point of the junction of the leg with the shoulder as you do it. So just a few hairs at a time and neatly. So that when the dog's standing, you get once again that unbroken line through. Recomb, shake again and do it again. Pluck again. And with patience, you'll get a beautiful straight line through there. And from the side view also, we want this perfectly straight line through here. And it's a little more difficult from the side because all dogs have a dip beneath this shoulder muscle. So it's from the bottom of the shoulder muscle into the hair, leg hair in a unbroken straight line once again. See how I'm getting that line straight? Then you comb it again, up, give it a shake, leg down, see these little hairs, see them? Make sure that line is quite unbroken. See how nice and straight that looks through here now. Now it's most important to get this line straight right through to the elbow. And it's most important to have this hair on the elbow very neat. I already told you about the hock and it's exactly the same as the elbow. Now with the elbow, if you have any excess hair on here, and your dog is slightly out at elbow, that fault will be exaggerated. By out at elbow, I mean the elbow out and the toe actually turned inwards like that, so the elbow's right out from the side like that. And of course, if the dog is slightly like that and you've got hair out here, it's going to look 10 times worse. And in reverse, if your dog is inwards, like so. See the elbow pointing into the chest and the foot turning outwards. See? Out away like that. Feet out. That is what we call tied elbows and if you have too much hair on there, once again the condition will look worse. So, even if your dog is lovely and straight in the elbows and the front legs, best to tell the judge that your dog looks even straighter. So it's most important to trim that elbow region completely and utterly straight, short and neat. And by straight, I mean into the hair of the leg. 
and in a perfectly straight line right through there. So it's just the same principle again. Comb it up, give the leg a bit of a shake and take out with your fingers any hairs which are interfering with your straight line through here to the foot. And your straight lines must continue right down into the leg hair itself. Now, a lot of Airedales grow sort of setter type furnishings on the backs of the legs, which are quite a lot longer than the hair on the actual legs themselves. And these are the bits that I'm pulling out right now. So it's the same principles again. You just comb the leg up like so. Give it a good shake. Put it down again. And then pull out those long hairs so you make your lines all nice and straight. Now, I do know of people who straighten up front legs by actually parting them like so and doing it all in strips or layers like that so you're only working on this much hair at a time. Now I haven't had a lot of success with that although I've tried it and once again it's an individual thing. I purely cut do the top do the feet first as I showed you, then this area here right around and then I blend it into the leg hair, finger and thumb, like that until I get the legs absolutely straight from the shoulders through to the feet when viewed from all angles and really it's just a matter of perseverance. However, one point I will make clear. This knee area here. When your dog moves that's going to blouse out and for you people who are going to show your dog perhaps pay a little bit more attention to straightening that area around the knee and having it just that little bit shorter. But really there's not much more than I can show you regarding straightening the legs than to keep checking your lines in reference to your dog's body. Straight lines all the way through, front, side, back. Comb it up once again. Shake it and then your long hairs you just pull. And if you do it by those methods, you'll find that no matter which way the wind blows, or how often you comb the legs. They will always fall nice and straight and by using your fingers only on the legs and not scissors, you'll find you'll keep your nice tan colour up. It is tedious, it is slow, but it is by far the most satisfactory way to straighten furnishings. The amount of furnishings that you actually should leave on your dog is a matter of personal taste and what balances the dog as a whole. So I am now perfectly satisfied that that leg is perfectly straight from all angles and blending into his body with a nice straight line from shoulder to foot. So, with the body now complete, I am going to show you how to fine trim that most important section of the dog, the head. Good boy. Trimming the head of an Airedale is not as difficult as what a lot of people imagine. What you have to remember is the head is essentially like a brick. So you're looking from a, for a straight line through from the skull to the nose. You're looking for a straight line through from the end of the beard through onto the neck. And you're looking for straight lines 
from the inside edge of the ear through to the end of the beard. And using the same principles as I showed you before, you get your head as square as possible. And if you've been very careful about these lines I told you to leave before, you won't find it too bad. Now, I'm starting here with the skull. Maybe if you're trimming a head for the first time, you're better not using your knife, you're better using your fingers like I showed you before. Because I've told you to leave rather a large amount of hair here. But you must get all that step out and get it straight from the skull to the nose. From the top, I'm just levelling off that line through here, as you can see. And the same principles that I was showing you on the leg. You take the long hairs, you comb it up, you give it a bit of a shake, you comb it back down again, and you take the long hairs off again. Now, one of the reasons I told you to leave so much on here to blend is because some strains of Airedales have rather prominent bones just across there. Two of them going up from the eyes into a sort of a V. This dog, fortunately, has a lovely flat skull, as an Airedale should. But some of them, these bones, are not only ugly and pronounced, they make the head grooming difficult. So if I tell everybody to leave the hair well back there, those dogs with those prominent bones can hide them because you just take the hair off from in front of those bones and that makes the line easier to get. So now on this dog you can see I have the line forward. See that? From the skull, it goes right forward through there. See that line coming through nicely? Nice and straight. So, now it comes a matter of doing these eyebrows, which present difficulty to some people. And you're better trimming the nose section, in fact, with those eyebrows back. So, pull them up like so, put them back on the dog's skull and continue with the line down the skull, down the nose, the line from the skull, down the nose, so that you have it all in the one line right through whatever angle you are looking at. The next section of the head I'm about to attack is this section here. Now conventionally, you're always told to take that hair off from corner of eye to corner of mouth, which would be like that. I have told you to go down vertically and along horizontally like that, purely because some dogs, when you look at them from the front, are a bit bulgy in cheek. And if you've got all this hair here, to blend in, well then you can leave that a bit longer and camouflage it. And that bit of hair there is actually outside of the line from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. But nevertheless, the greater proportion of this hair must be stripped. So, bearing in mind this line through here and watching that very closely all the way down to the mouth, or the beard line where you left it before. See, I'm holding the dog actually from there and if his mouth's open, it makes it easier. So holding that out of the way, you trim this top separately from the bottom and watching that that line is directly through like that, extending from the end of the beard right up to the ear itself. So. This is what it looks like. You might be better to use your thumb and your finger 
when you're not used to it. But the hair here is fairly tough and for quickness of the video I am using my knife. But to get it dead accurate you're probably better to use your fingers. I suppose it's a matter of do as I say, don't do as I do. So even with that amount of hair off, can you see that line coming through there horizontally compared especially with the other side which hasn't yet been done? See where I've taken it off? A line completely through there. So it's a blending process once again right into the baldness underneath here. And coming right forward, right forward, until you've got that line, when viewed from the front, quite straight. So, comb it again, use the same principle, comb it back again, and up, and forward and pay special attention to the unbroken line that I showed you and also around the corner of the eye. Now the corner of the eye requires even more special attention because if you leave the hair on the corner of the eye here, you will actually broaden the head See how much broader he looks on that side where all these bits are and see how much better it looks on that side where they're off. So come right into the corner of the eye itself, take off a little fraction of hair just below the eye itself very carefully and then paying special attention to that line, go down to the corner of his mouth now. Now, with all these lines nice and straight, see, straight from there and straight also from the front. Look how nice I've got that line up here. See that? And from here. As I said before, the head like a brick. The last thing on the top head that we have to do are the eyebrows. Now, it's most important, as I said with the bottom here, that you go right into the corner of the eye itself. Because if you don't, any hair that from the front hangs outside of that line through here makes the skull look just that much wider. So you must take the hair right away from the corner of the eye itself so that everything, in fact, is forward. And if your dog is a little bit light in eye, certainly leave the eyebrows longer so they're shaded for showing. And if your dog has a lovely dark eye, as this boy has, you can take the eyebrows fairly short and show his lovely dark eyes off to the judge. So I'm now removing the hair well away from the corner of the eye itself. Then you just come up to a point. If you strip it and don't use scissors, you will keep the lovely tan hair of the eyebrows. Nothing looks worse than a dog with extra blonde eyebrows and the rest of his head nice and tan. So strip some of the hair out from the eyebrows and then for the final finishing touches, you purely get your scissors and right to the corner of the eyebrow itself in one snip you just take it across like that. It is purely a neatening off process so that from the corner of the eye exactly to a point here you have in fact just a triangle of hair blending in to the skull hair here and the nose beneath. Now the hair beneath the eye is to a certain extent cleared off. So the dog actually looks down its nose. 
And another thing I will say about the eyebrows, when viewing the dog from the front, if you leave the eyebrows actually too close together, like that, you can give the illusion of the dog being almost cross-eyed and sort of wasted, W-A-I-S-T-E-D, in the middle. And if you leave the eyebrows too far over, in other words, taking the hair off too far into the eye itself, there, you can actually increase this distance across here and make the dog look excessively broad in skull. So somewhere between the two, you leave that neatly into the inside corner of the eye and up. You leave it in a triangle over the top and right to the very corner of the eye itself. And just touching off the outside edge with the scissors across there, giving a nice neat line and that completes the trimming of the eyebrow itself. So, with the top portion of the head now complete and the top part of the beard now blended in completely right through the nose and the eyebrows, our final stages of the fine grooming is to do the underbeard. Now, as I said, when we stripped it up to here, it's best if the dog's mouth is open and it's best to put the top beard completely out of the way while you do it. And in fact, if you did what I showed you in the stripping section, you'll find this under beard trimming very, very easy. It's just a matter of blending into the actual long portion of the beard here. And in fact, just a few long hairs off from here so that you get it down to a maximum here. So, fingers, just the few long hairs that interrupt that particular line. Just so that they all come nicely forward. And they don't interrupt the line at all. A few there. And it's sometimes necessary to just go along the mouth line. And you see how I get that all nicely forward? There. And into a maximum. There. I don't like scissors used on the underneath beard. Nor do I like the effect some people have of taking it too far up there. Just about that little section up there where I showed you before and then just blending it neatly so that that is a maximum. That looks fairly good to me. So now, seven weeks later, here I have my beautiful Australian champion Ranger Rolls Royce in full show trim. In my next section on coat maintenance, I will show you how to maintain the dog in this condition.